where the rubber always meets the road. I think. Actually, I'm not even sure what that means. Heartland Newsfeed Radio Network. Live at heartlandnewsfeed.com. Elements really digesting the jobs numbers. He tells me they're great, and he'll give us all the details. Plus, we'll have an update on the Double Crop Week Forum. That forum down in Mount Vernon this week, very well attended. Mike will have the details on that event. Later on, we'll get the social media update from Sabrina Berkowitz. What were the hottest stories of the week? And that is way upon because this week, the hottest story is the cold weather. So we'll be along um, with all things social media with Sabrina Berkowitz. We'll check the markets. The loss is still at the National Cattlemen's Beef Association Convention in New Orleans, where Ag Secretary Sonny Perdue is about to speak. So later in the day, we'll have a complete update from that presentation in New Orleans. All that, plus much more, coming your way on this edition of RFD Today. have a lifetime of experience as a financial planner, a lawyer, a homemaker, an educator, a mechanic, a nurse. You know what I am now? I'm a Senior Corps RSVP volunteer. I build homes and young minds. I build parks and playgrounds and support our nation's veterans. I build gardens and help families with their finances. I build healthy futures. And organize disaster relief. I build teams and friendships. And families. I build lives and communities. And myself. I'm a builder and I lead by experience. How about you? Join Senior Corps RSVP. Lead by experience. At SeniorCorps.gov. Farm, family, food. Those three words best describe Illinois Farm Bureau. Farm. For 100 years, Farm Bureau in Illinois has represented and served the men and women who make Illinois one of the top food producing states. Family. At the heart of rural Illinois are traditional farm families who work together through Illinois Farm Bureau. And food. Farm Bureau families are proud to grow the healthy food they provide their families and yours. Farm, family, food. The heart of Farm Bureau in Illinois. Farm Week and FarmWeekNow.com journalist Dina Stroish connects rural routes for you. From the farm bill to crop insurance to GMO labeling, her expertise is apparent in the story she reports. Here's a bit about her rural roots. I get to meet interesting people and share their stories, and I get paid to do it. I cover ag policy and really enjoy keeping the farming community updated on these important issues. Be it routes or roots, RFD Radio, FarmWeekNow.com and FarmWeek. We keep you connected. We're back here on RFD today on a Friday. And DeLoss, him being in New Orleans, I get to sit in the big chair today. And we are talking with the senior economist at the Illinois Farm Bureau. We call him the corner economist. And why do we call you the corner economist, Mike Doherty? Because I sit in the corner. Yes, you do. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yes, you do. And you've been doing so for how long? How long have you been here with IFB? I think a 13, 14 years, something like that. Nice. Yeah. It's yeah. a great place to work. It is. You know, I, especially when it's 10 degrees out. You right. Know, I grew up on a hog and cattle farm uh, out near Tawanda, Myrna. And, uh, you know, people don't understand my sense of humor. And I say, you know, it's a great day to have an indoor job. You know, but you grow up that way, you think about it. <laughs> yes, you do. And we send our good thoughts out to all of our friends, all of our farmers across the state who really put in the time this week. Now, speaking of being face to face with Illinois farmers, you were there in Mount Vernon this week at the what used to be called the Illinois Wheat Forum. Now is the Double Crop Forum. Well, we have uh, two uh, conf- conferences per year with the Illinois Wheat Association and uh this one is in conjunction, it's something created just a few years ago, in conjunction with the Illinois Soybean Association. So the Illinois Wheat Association and the Illinois Soybean Association went together to create this 
uh, double crop for them. And that's because all, virtually all wheat that's grown in Illinois, a lot of people don't know that, is grown as a double crop with soybeans. So the two crops have to work together. So you have to adjust what your expectations are and how you're managing that soybean crop to fit in with the wheat crop you're going to try to put into the same 12-month calendar. And uh, so we had these experts come in from uh, on the market side, agronomy side, pests, uh, plant pathologists uh, from various states, Kentucky, Missouri, and from University of Illinois and Southern Illinois University, um, and some private consultants. And uh, so we have an all-day uh, forum with their presentations. And then at the end of that day, this was all happened yesterday in Mount Vernon. And we had a great turnout, by the way. It was 80 degrees. <laughs> it was 80 degrees. Actually, it was about 10 degrees there and snowing. It snowed the night before. So we thought our numbers would be, you know, down a lot. They were down a little bit because of the weather, but not very much. I was surprised. There was a good turnout of uh, these wheat, these these double crop wheat farmers, and uh, you know they they are very motivated. And part of the reason why this was very interesting to me on that that forum that we had yesterday, um, Gary Schnitke was there to talk about profitability. And what he outlined is he was talking about their FBMS uh, system and the uh, profitability of the farms in that system. And uh, one of the things that shows up of the highly profitable highly profitable farms in Illinois. A surprising number of them have double crop wheat. So it's working in terms of increasing profitability. And just at the right time, because as we talked last week, uh, you know, the, the phrase now, wheat can be the double or the cover crop also, not only double crop, but right. the cover crop that pays. And yep. a lot of farmers don't think of it that way, but wow, you could have two crops plus a cover. Yep. And when you have these, we have more and more multi family. Uh, farming uh, businesses, and in those multifamily farming businesses, you have a certain tier or young of uh, people involved who are younger farmers, and they're looking for more activity on that farm than just uh, spring uh, planting and fall harvest of corn and soybeans. And this gives them that greater activity. They can be assigned that wheat crop and to manage that wheat crop, and it kind of takes a little bit of the the worry, uh, the extra management time it does take to have a, a third crop in your Normal would have been a two crop rotation over two years. Now you got a three crop rotation over two years, and so um, they um, uh, it gives them something to work on there. Just mm-hmm. the, they can be long can be long to them. Now let's add a, a bonus, the cherry on top, we'll call it, for livestock farmers especially. Uh, then you have straw, which That's you right. probably put put some up in your day as well. But right now, in in the deep freeze of winter in Illinois, those straw be- uh, beds have made a difference of life and death in well, many cases. Well, and not only the you know, there's a big market, of course, in the Chicago border uh, uh, collar counties up there because of the uh, horse market, the recreational horse market. Uh, really drives a lot of that straw market. And uh, hmm. when you have a, a harsh, uh, well, a normal winter in Illinois, which <laughs> as far as I'm concerned is a, a harsh winter, mm-hmm. um, when you have a winter like we're having, that uh, increases that demand. Hmm. So I say we're going to get T-shirts next year. Wheat, let's go wheat. Wheat, let's let's, let's put, do this. put the wheat on. Put <laughs> anything else that we want that you want to take away. I know your staff, my goodness, uh, work so hard, and you guys put on a, a good um, association event, and they can go to your yeah. website for more details. Yeah, they can go to. The, we will be getting uh, presentations up on the uh, website. They can just contact the, the contact information is on the website for the Illinois Wheat Association. Uh, they could drop. They could find the contact information there and drop us an email note. We can get you that information. If you were unable to attend the conferences, you can look at the uh, the slide decks, and we'll be happy to talk with you about it. And we'll slide right into uh, the economics of that because obviously, when it makes sense with the pencil, it makes sense to you as an economist. That's and right. And it does, right? Yeah, that's right. Yep. It does. So uh, we're going to head into the jobs report. Anything else on ag economics? Are we going to get this China deal? Lots going into to another uh, busy weekend, right? We, we had another night of tweets. Mm. <laughs> so, um, you know, um, no, I don't know. We'll, we'll wait and see, right? We're just going to wait and see. Um, you know, it would be it would be lovely from the standpoint all the ag economists, of course, like all the farmers, like everybody in this industry, we would love to see resolution with our trade relationship with China, and we would love to see to get this USMCA agreement signed and take away any threat 
of ending up with no agreement at all with our two biggest uh, trading partners, Canada and Mexico, and especially with our number one corn and hog buyer in terms of exports, uh, which is Mexico. So, um, you know, we'd love to see that happen. And uh, so that that's still out there. You know, we're working on it, you know, but uh, but I don't. I don't know. Have any recent news on that? It's amazing, isn't it? How much, how many sectors that those talks affect? You know, we were just given the livestock markets earlier today, looking at that. Virtually every sector in the in the country is looking at this. Yes, yeah. Mm-hmm. There's, there's, there are, um, you know, it's it's broad, a broad range of affected industries. Sure. Well, give us a good tease. We've got uh, 35 seconds here before our break, and you come back and jump into the jobs report, but sort of tease us on what those numbers uh, held. Well, as every economist always says, on the other hand, Mm. and on the other hand, we had a robust jobs report. Dow Jones average was up this morning on the news of that report. Uh, Some very good news on the economy. Mm. Mike Doherty is in the studio today on a Friday. We'll continue this discussion, as we mentioned, job report and others uh, facing us here going into another weekend. Plus, in-studio guest from Gibson City, it is GDM Seats. We'll learn all about that company when we come back. This is RFD Today. Radio Network's Delos Yonkey connects rural routes for you. Delos delivers essential farm and food-related news to our listeners. His witty voice has been heard on the air for more than two decades. Here's a bit about his rural roots. Growing up on a farm prepared me for my career. I try to know a little about a lot of things and let the people I interview be the experts. I've always wanted to be on the radio. I'm just happy to do what I enjoy. Be it routes or roots, RFD Radio, FarmWeekNow.com, and FarmWeek keep you connected. If you're in the mood for some sprucing up, you're in luck. From big to small or farm to front yard, your Illinois Farm Bureau member discount from John Deere is ready and waiting to help. It's easy to think green when it's the rewards loyalty program with savings on equipment, special parts, and home and workshop products. Whether your tasks involve mowing, planting, or cleaning, you'll be set for whatever your work requires. All you need to do is sign up, have your membership number handy, and go to johndeere.com slash Farm Bureau. Remember that movie, National Lampoon's Vacation? Well, Clark Griswold has nothing on me. Give me the open road at my Illinois Farm Bureau membership card, and I am the ultimate road warrior. Like last summer, I drove the family to Williamsburg at a fraction of the cost. Once I hit the road, I don't stop for much, so I used my membership to rent a minivan from Enterprise. The kids got more bouncing room, and I saved 5%. Then I used my Illinois Farm Bureau membership to save 20% on choice hotels from here all the way to the East Coast. On the way back, we stopped and saved at our favorite theme park, too. I was hoping it would wear out the kids and they'd sleep. Good thing I got that minivan for bouncing, though. No matter how unique my travel needs are, I know that my membership can help. Illinois Farm Bureau, it's membership for my lifestyle. Isn't it time you learned how Illinois Farm Bureau member-only discounts fit into your lifestyle? Call your county Farm Bureau or visit ILFB.org for details. Okay, men, this is your time. Maybe you didn't choose this, but you're here now. You're going to go out there and be an all-star caregiver. It's up to you. So what are you going to do? You're going to go grocery shopping, cook, clean, Either emotionally and physically. You gotta dig deeper. Drive them to physical therapy, doctor's appointments. Don't you forget about the pharmacy. No, you won't. Because that's what caregivers do. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. This is your time to show the world, your family, and yourself that you're tougher than tough. Now go out there and be the best caregiver this world has ever seen. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. A public service announcement brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council.
We're back in studio for RFD today on a Friday with the senior economist here at Illinois Farm Bureau, Mike Doherty. Now, Mike, uh, last Friday we learned of the news uh, that the government shutdown had been temporarily uh, lifted. And we're we're getting back to, are we to normal yet, or what's going on out there? It, it may be better than normal, uh, believe it or not. Wow. Uh, because despite the government shutdown, it, which did... Um, it, it, it furloughed uh, hundreds of thousands of, of workers, plus you had an equal effect in, uh, to the uh, l- lack of wages, current wages being paid uh, out. So those wages are going to have to be made up. You had an equal quantity effect of contracts, government contracts. So those would be non-governmental workers, but they didn't get paid either, all those government contractors. And, and uh, people were receiving government grants and all that stuff stopped. Um, so there was an expectation here that this was going to at least, uh, you know, s- suppress the economy in January. Plus, you had uh, the usual January effect, which is the hangover from Christmas. So almost always uh, you have lower growth numbers. Um, used to be five, six years ago, we had very low growth numbers in January and February in that first quarter. Well, um, regardless of all that. Uh, the jobs report came in the day, and the jo- job numbers were double what economists had been predicting. Um, economists across the board all thought, okay, probably about 150, 160, 170,000 new, net new jobs created in the economy. Uh, we'll go with that. And instead, it came in at over 300,000. And uh, so this was a big surprise. Uh, to economists, it's sort of like where you sit there and as an economist, you, you go, oops, <laughs> didn't call this one right. Um, so it, now on the on the other side, I think people need to keep in mind that uh, they did have a downward revisement in the December job numbers. Uh, when I was on this show a month ago, um, I think I, I wore out the number of times I said, holy cow, and I can't believe this. You know, we have over uh, 300,000 jobs created in December. Well, we expected some of that due to Christmas. That has been revised down to 212, Mm. which is important to note because it shows you that these month-to-month job numbers, you really need to kind of wait, temper your reaction, um, wait to see whether there's big revisions later, and really you need to look at quarter to quarter and see how these quarters size up. But we had in December a lot of pretty poor, actually late November and December, some poor economic news. Despite that big jobs number in December, that over 300,000 number, which was revised down by 100,000, down to 212,000 net new jobs in December. Despite that, we had other bad economic news, particularly the Apple um, drop in the Apple sales to China, because people saw that as a barometer of, quote unquote, the real economic report out of China, not the Chinese government report, mm. which was over Chinese government report was over 6% GDP growth rate in China, which, you know, people talk slow down to me. It was not really much of a slowdown. I mean, that's still very big for an economy that is uh, the size of the United States economy over there. So, um, but um, the, this, uh, so you, ha- so what the people looked at these uh, Apple uh, sales numbers said, okay, that's the real economy. So the whole world economy is slowing down. That's going to affect the United States. Well, um, this jobs report is significant because if this number holds, it it looks like, well, that's not the case after all. Uh, In fact, we're going into 2019 with the fundamentals of this economy looking basically as good as anybody could hope they could look. It's it's amazing. And it means we are uh, moving on with the uh, trend here of the longest running uh, job growth economy we've ever had it's over a hundred consecutive months now there's a lot of people out there who win uh, make money and lose money by believing in business cycles this is disturbing to them Mm. (laughs) where's the cycle there's no cycle anymore it's just every day you wake up it's like living in arizona you know every day you wake up the sun's out yeah uh you know it's just uh it's just pretty amazing um so um, you know, of course, everybody says that about the time you say that is when they say the other foot's going to fall. But all the economists have been predicting, uh, uh, saying pretty much for December, January, despite the global slowdown. Yes, slower growth, but no recession. This bolsters that argument. Who's taking credit for this? Oh, I would say just about everybody. 
And they'll try that, right? Sure, sure. Yeah. They're going to say, uh, all this winning is is terrible. we got to quit winning so much. You know? Yeah. So anything else in either the jobs report or, as we mentioned earlier, really the talks? This is going to be a very interesting weekend. Uh, everyone yeah. watching closely with the Chinese talks. Yeah. Um, well, there's other good news in this jobs report. Uh, uh, wages were up for the quarter. They, they were not much of a wage gain, gain just for January, but, um, you know, really – the month to month wait month to month wage gains are very uh, fuzzy number. You really need to look at the quarterly, and you look at the last quarter is up by uh, over three percent. That's a pretty darn good number. Uh, I sure people would like to see you know four and five percent, but uh, given how long this recovery has lasted, you know everything's working in favor of the labor side, and I think you're seeing the argument shift here by people out there, the voters and people on the streets, is saying. Um, you know, I've got a job. Now my concern is getting a better job or mm-hmm. better quality job or higher wages, or I want uh, 40 hours a week and not 30 hours a week, or I don't want to have to commute so far because of the cost of living. I have to live 40 miles out from Long Beach, you know, to get to the lo- to get to my job. So you're seeing quality issues becoming uh, more focused on uh, rather than just the job numbers because basically we're having you know this regular growth in jobs. Well, Mike Doherty, uh, if you've got a few minutes, we're going to have you stick around because our next guest happens to be talking about an uh, Argentine-based seed company. And you are our resident South American expert. There you go. So you're staying. Hola. We're making you stay. This is RFD Today. (laughs) More farm news and information ahead. Stay tuned for more RFD Today here on the Illinois Farm Bureau Radio Network. Corn. Thanks to Illinois Corn Farmers, you can see it just about everywhere here in the land of Lincoln. What you may not know is the unexpected places you can find corn, like your gas tank. 97% of all fuel sold in the U.S. is a 10% ethanol blend. And here in Illinois, we're a top producer of ethanol. Not only does it drive your car, it drives our economy. Be sure to proudly choose an ethanol blend at the pump the next time you fill up. Illinois runs on homegrown corn and Illinois-made ethanol. Visit ilcorn.org to find out more. A message from Illinois Corn Farmers and their checkoff. We know you want the best for your family. We do too. That's why Illinois farmers continually look for new ways to help. We're working with Mother Nature to preserve water, protect land, and provide food. From our fields to your table, we want what's best for all of us and for future generations to come. Learn more about conservation efforts at ilfarmersconserve.com. Preserving our water, protecting our land, providing our food. This message brought to you by Illinois Farm Bureau. All ag. All Illinois. All now. There are a lot of smartphone apps out there, but do they have what's important to us here in Illinois? The Farm Week Now app does, and it's always at your fingertips. All ag, all Illinois, and 24-7 where and when you need it for free. Go to your app or Play Store on your smartphone, hit search, type in Farm Week Now, that's one word, and download it today. Brought to you by Illinois Farm Bureau, where we're all about farm, family, and food. You're going to need me. You're going to need us. All of us. You're going to need our technical skills, our math, our engineering skills. You're going to need our help with your water, your air, your food. You're going to need our organizational skills, our problem-solving skills. You're going to need our determination, our honesty, our compassion. You're going to need the next generation of leaders to face the challenges the future will bring. And we promise. We'll be there when you need us. Today, 4-H is growing the next generation of leaders. Support us at 4-H.org. RFD Radio Network's Jim Taylor connects rural routes for you. You can trust Jim every morning for your overnight markets. He gets up early to help keep farmers on top of their game. Here's a bit about his rural routes. I have the opportunity to cover something different every day and provide listeners with up-to-date markets, news they need to do their job and be successful, from legislative issues to crop updates and weather, of course. Be it routes or routes, RFD Radio, FarmWeekNow.com, and FarmWeek keep you connected. Hey, 
Hey, we're back in studio. Another in-studio guest joins the conversation on a Friday morning. Mike Doherty is still on mic one, and we have Lance Burdett, uh, who we're just getting to know. We have lots and lots of people in common, Lance, and we want to talk about that. But most importantly, your agriculture background and those farm roots in Missouri. Tell us about those. Well, I grew up uh, in a town of Honeywell, Missouri, uh, probably 200 people now, maybe. Um, so that's uh, that's our farm address and where uh, where home still is. Uh, went to school there, uh, and then I went to, went to school and studied agriculture. Um, started my career uh, with Monsanto right when they were getting in the seed business, uh, and uh, we were DeKalb dealers growing up, so I always kind of had an interest in the uh, in the seed business. Um, Left Monsanto, have done various things, um, and then a South American company called GDM Seeds uh, comes across uh, and comes looking for somebody to really help them launch their commercial efforts here uh, in North America that obviously understands the North American seed business, uh, but also has contacts uh, within the farmer audience kind of spread throughout the U.S. So that's how I've gotten here, family mm-hmm. of four. Uh, we live in, uh, live in St. Louis. Uh, so I do a lot of traveling. Uh, we're going to stay there for now, but ultimately uh, I spend most of my time in the Champaign, Gibson City area as we're really launching our efforts here. So what fuels your fire for agriculture? What is your connective tissue? I'm sure growing up on the farm, you know, something uh, about it. Is it the agronomy? Uh, is it the people? What is it? Uh, I would say really two aspects. Uh, the people um, are unrivaled with any industry. Uh Uh, in the world. Uh, The people that you get to work with um, are fantastic. Um, It's what I grew up around. It's what I'm most familiar with. Um, So that's what I'm most passionate about is is primarily the people. But secondarily, um, it's pretty hard to get more excited uh, about an industry other than agriculture uh, because of what agriculture does throughout the world um, and in small communities that are so near and dear to my heart. So it's really um, the opportunities that agriculture affords along with the quality of people with which you get to work with uh, and, and partner with. Now, we invited uh, Mike to join the conversation because, as we said, Mike is our resident uh, South American uh, expert here in the building, has been there many, many times. And anytime, Mike, if you have a question, please jump in. And, and because this is very interesting, and I also noticed uh, here, Lance, on your presser that you are connected with Burris Seeds, and some of our listeners have been longtime customers. Tell us about what the partnership there means. So our go-to-market model uh really globally, um, is, is quite different than most traditional seed companies and genetics companies. Um, why do I say that? Um, uh, the amount of units we sell throughout the world, uh, we do not have a sales arm uh, and we do not have a production arm. Uh, so whether you're in Brazil, where we have uh, nearly 50% market share, uh, we don't have a sales arm uh, and we don't own a production facility. So when launching into the U.S., uh, obviously, um, trying to hitch your wagon uh, to uh, someone who obviously has those two capabilities, um, as well as a great brand. Uh, They're a great family, uh, and they share really uh, our core values. Uh, It was a pretty easy easy partnership to find uh, there with the Burris Company. So uh, we're a soybean genetics company, uh, really primarily focused on research genetics breeding. Um, We need to find partners um, either on the branded side uh, or through the licensing uh, side of our business uh, that have the sales um, people um, to get uh, our brands into the marketplace or their brands with our genetics uh, and that have the capability to uh, produce the seed uh, with the same uh, high quality standards that we remain focused on. Any questions? Well, my, my question is, why do we need this? So uh, what's missing in, in the market already? What's missing is I would say uh, it isn't competition always good. Uh, and so, uh, obviously, we've uh, founded back in 1982 in South America in Chacabuca, Argentina, uh, which is where our headquarters remains today, uh, still privately held, family-owned uh, uh, company, um, started in 1982 as a soybean genetics company. Uh, and uh, our rich history uh, is that, um, obviously, starting there in Argentina, became known as the soybean specialist, how uh, constantly challenging the status quo of genetics constantly trying to understand the best possible placement of those genetics uh, and really having um, kind of uh, an unrivaled desire to partner with all of the different people because we're small, we're private, we don't have all of the resources that maybe some of the multinationals do to deliver that excellence that we've delivered in Argentina 
uh, and then moved into uh, and then moved into Brazil. So the results there have been quite remarkable. Uh, but the uh, vision of the company is to be the number one soybean genetics company in the world, uh, and you can't do that without being in North America. Um, so. Uh, hence the reason of coming to North America. Efforts started here 12 years ago from a breeding, uh, breeding and germplasm perspective, starting in the Mid South and Delta, obviously where there's some similarities uh, with what uh, varieties um, and environmental conditions that exist in South America, uh, and then obviously, as, as, as you well know, uh, those efforts are now moving to the north with our now commercial headquarter operations in North America being in Gibson City, uh, as well as having a breeding facility uh, in Hutchison, Minnesota. So. Uh, why? Um, we believe competition is good, one. Two, um, we believe there's a huge opportunity for us to bring a different approach to the market uh, and uh, to challenge the status quo uh, that maybe the North American producer uh, feels like can be challenged. We're heading into a break, but I actually was lucky enough to go on the South American trip last winter, right now, about a year ago, actually, this week. And maybe when we come back, we can kind of dive into farmers or farmers, no matter where they reside. And that's really my takeaway from the whole trip last year. And I think that the 10 farmers, Illinois farmers that went on that trip came back with some of the same sentiments that uh, farmers are farmers, no matter where they live in the world. We're going to break and be back with more RFD today. RFD Radio Network's Jim Taylor connects rural routes for you. You can trust Jim every morning for your overnight markets. He gets up early to help keep farmers on top of their game. Here's a bit about his rural roots. I have the opportunity to cover something different every day and provide listeners with up-to-date markets, news they need to do their job and be successful, from legislative issues to crop updates and weather, of course. Be it routes or roots, RFD Radio, FarmWeekNow.com, and FarmWeek keep you connected. Yes, I listen to a lot of talk radio, but I wouldn't call myself a political junkie. I guess that's why I like being a member of the Illinois Farm Bureau. No matter what my comfort level is, Farm Bureau has something for me and my farm. As an Illinois Farm Bureau member, I can pick and choose what's best for me, from reading election news in Farm Week to actually going to Washington. That's enough to make me a policy nut after all. Call your county Farm Bureau and customize your membership today. Take a look at your numbers here this hour. We are still trading higher in the, the corn, soybeans, and now we're higher in the wheat on a Friday morning. Nearby March corn up three, three seventy nine and a half. May up three. September corn up three and a quarter, three ninety eight and three quarters. And the new crop December corn up three and a quarter at four oh three and a quarter. Nearby March soybeans up eleven and a quarter. We're at nine twenty six and a half. May up 11 at 9.40 and a quarter. Out to new crop November soybeans up an even dime, 9.65 and a half. Nearby March wheat up four and a quarter. We're at 5.20 and three quarters. May up three and a quarter. And September wheat up two at 5.37 and three quarters. Soybean meal for May up 5.90. We're at 3.19.90. Those are your numbers here on the RFD Radio Network. <clears throat> Hey, we're back here on RFD today on a Friday. What a great conversation we are having with Mike Doherty, senior economist here at the Illinois Farm Bureau and representing uh, GDM Seeds, a uh, base headquartered in Gibson City, is Lance uh, Burdett. And uh, did I get that right again, Lance? You did. Burdett. Missouri, Burdett. Got it. We're talking about your company. We're talking about uh, what you are hoping for in this area. Mike Doherty, you had a great uh, point made in the break. Why don't you start Start us off with that question. Well, just kind of curious at Steve's viewpoint here on, uh, you know, this is further evidence of this sort of merging of the deep South American, the Argentinian and Southern Brazil uh, mar- ag, uh, agribusiness market with the North American market. And, uh, you know, we've got 
you know, Argentinians working up here, CEO of ADM as an Argentinian. We've got a Brazilian-based company between us and Champagne. Uh, uh, we've had uh, a, region, a Brazilian out of DuPont Pioneer became the head of a, a regional office here in uh, Bloomington for a while. And uh, so it just seems to me that there's a, like a slow march here where at least uh, these big growing areas and big, uh, very developed agri economies of the Midwest – and with their parallel growing areas in South America, particularly in Brazil and Argentina, that there's just a continue uh, globalization going on here, a continue, uh, you know, flattening of that market where you have to be in both markets if you're going to, you know, really be in the market. Yeah, we agree 100%. Uh, obviously, that's why we're here. Um, uh, the growth opportunities in South America for us, um, while there's still acreage going to grow there, uh, when you've got nearly 70% of the genetic uh, market share uh, in Argentina and 50% of the genetic market share in Brazil, uh, you're going to have to see acres grow before you're going to be able to really expand. So the growth opportunity for us is uh, is North America first. Uh, and then, as I was sharing with you uh, while we were off the air there a little, uh, we are also launching our breeding efforts in China. Um, I, think, I think a message that uh, the Illinois soybean farmers should hear, though, is what works from a genetic perspective in South America. It's not that we're just bringing genetics up here from South America, uh, because there is a difference in what can work there versus what can work here. So in certain regions, there are similarities, uh, and some of that can happen. But in many of the regions, specifically where we're sitting here today in Bloomington, Illinois, um, we're really starting from scratch um, in a very competitive marketplace. So yes, there is globalization, uh, but if our vision is to be the number one soybean genetics company in the world, it won't happen without being in soybean-rich North America. Okay, so it's like a global a global market, and this and we're we're a big piece of that. So nine million acres there. worth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So tell us more about the name and more about uh, the people that make up your company. So GDM Seeds is is uh, really the the parent, uh, if you will. Um, but the brands that North American farmers, Illinois soybean farmers. Uh, will hopefully become more accustomed to through time. Uh, first and foremost is Don Mario. That's our flagship brand in North America. Um, like many companies, we did tons of market research on should we create another brand? Uh, should we do something different that sounds more American? And we landed right back with where we are. Um, first and foremost, we are unique to the North American market. So why try to change a brand that already has a significant presence uh, in soybean-rich South America? So let's just stick with their roots. Uh, and stick with Don Mario. So that will be our traded platform, if you will, for launching soybeans in the United States. Uh, and as some people already know, with the uh, with the Burris Seed Company as our first partner, we're launching a second brand, which is uh, the Virtue brand, uh, which will be focused on conventional soybeans. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, being a global player, uh, we exist in markets where intellectual property isn't what it is here in the United States. Uh, so 40% of our R&D dollars are still spent on conventional, non-GMO, however you want to call it, uh, soybeans. So we're launching a brand, Virtue, uh, that we will be looking for partners, uh, are looking for partners uh, that are interested in um, conventional soybean uh, varieties, uh, non-GMO, non-GMO genetics. Uh, we'll have a brand called Virtue uh, to also bring competition into that market. That's really been, uh, I would say, fairly stagnant for a number of years because nobody's really investing dollars into that. So those are the two brands uh, that we will be launching. Uh, and then the other, obviously, distribution platform for our genetics to come into this country is through end licensing, uh, similar to the model that most of the seed companies are used to here in the U.S., uh, where we already um, um, have seen significant growth over the last four years um, so those are really the three distribution platforms for us launching brands into the U.S. That's very interesting, especially your non-GMO uh, line, your conventional line, because we have a number of farmers who are kind of strong on non-GMO production here in central Illinois. It's partly because of a local plant here in Bloomington that takes a lot of those non-GMO beans. And, you know, a lot of our public, uh, they don't realize that we grow both kinds. You know, we grow genetically modified uh, soybeans uh, for our marks, but we also grow non-genetically modified uh, soybeans, and it just depends on the premium that the consumer, ultimate consumer, is willing to pay for that. We're happy to grow them. Which you know? was my so. next question. Where are these beans going to go? And, how, and Gibson City, obviously, is uh, one of the reasons there, you're there. Is it, It's quite a hub. Yeah, so, uh, Mike, your point uh, is well stated. I mean, if you look right around here in the Decatur-Bloomington area, uh, I would say the amount of market share that conventional beans have uh, compared to 
compared to traded soybeans may be even a little heavier because of Cargill's uh, market here, as well as ADM's obvious presence there, uh, their indicator. Overall, it's only four and a half to five and a half percent of the market uh, if you look at it. So you're talking four to five million acres, but there's more and more people looking at it. Uh, both from a profit opportunity, premium opportunity, uh, and we believe there's a huge opportunity from a genetic diversity because most of the genetics that people are using today are, are very, very old public varieties because not many people are investing into that side of their portfolio. Uh, Gibson City uh, obviously also provides an opportunity into that market, uh, but why Gibson City? Uh, well, when you look at the soybean acres in the United States uh, and you look at um, the 80-20 rule, if you will, it's hard fought to find a place that's more central than Gibson City in Champaign, Illinois, uh, which is why uh, one of the reasons we decided to put our footprint down there. Uh, secondarily, um, the opportunity for partnerships. As I mentioned earlier, we're, we're a big believer in partnerships. Uh, we're still privately held, family owned, uh, so our dollars and our resources can't do everything. So whether it's U of I or all of the other companies that exist within a pretty quick uh, pretty quick commute uh, in and out of that area, uh, you can really have some good partnerships. Uh, and we um, bought the old dairy land slash Dow facility. Uh, that was a breeding facility that is large enough for us now uh, from a breeding and commercialization effort standpoint uh, in Illinois, but we will probably quickly grow out of it. One minute remains. Contact, how do folks find out more about you? Uh, so obviously we have a website uh, like everyone, um, and you can learn more about the Don Mario brand, uh, donmarioseeds.com. Um, uh, but more importantly, if a farmer is interested in growing a variety, uh, the first partner in Illinois is Burris. Um, so if you know who your Burris area sales manager or dealer is, uh, that's the best way for you to find out more about the varieties that we're offering uh, in this specific marketplace. So you can learn more about us from a global perspective by visiting our website, Don Mario, uh, or visit with a local representative from the Burris Seed Company uh, who will know more about the genetics and placement for your specific area. And I would assume, since Mike has been diligently taking notes, he's going to have a few follow-up questions for you after the broadcast. Uh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Thank you both for sticking yep. around, and really nice to see you again. And maybe we'll have you back to learn a little bit more about how things are going over there in Gibson City. Thank you for having us, Rita. Appreciate Lance the time. Lance at GDM Seeds and Mike Doherty. When we come back, I'm going to say we're going to talk a little cold weather maybe with Sabrina Berkowitz, who is waiting in the, the wings here for our social media uh, update. You're listening to RFD Today. Here's your livestock summary on a Friday on the RFT Radio Network. I'm Rita Frazier. Livestock futures finished lower yesterday. The extreme cold weather in the Midwest slowed down consumer demand for meat in the short term. Longer term, traders have doubts that that U.S.-China trade deal can be finalized before the March 1 deadline passes or that the demand from China for U.S. pork will be as strong as previously believed. Meanwhile, meat processing industry this week uh, will come out of the extreme cold with nothing more than short-term supply disruptions, they tell us. Tyson and Hormel both closed down plants this week due to the cold, but a Hormel official said they'll make up the difference with Saturday shifts. So for tomorrow, that's a look at your numbers and your livestock summary on the RFD Radio Network. How do people benefit from raising livestock here in Illinois? Rich Gebert, Illinois farmer, president of the Illinois Farm Bureau. Well, growing up on a livestock farm was always interesting, and I enjoy it more today than I did back then. But it did give me the opportunity to have a good work ethic, learn to get up in the morning. And you know, that was difficult during my senior days at high school and college days. I had a tendency not to go to bed at a respectable hour. But uh, no, it was always enjoyable on the farm and getting up before daybreak and milking the cows and getting the chores done and then go about the rest of the day's business. Illinois Farm Bureau, along with beef, corn, milk, pork, and soybean associations, make up the Livestock Development Group, supporting the Illinois livestock sector. For more information, check out IllinoisLivestock.org. Hey, 
Illinois Soybean Farmers. If you want to be the best of the best, your journey to the top starts at the summit. The 2019 Soybean Summit is coming back to Springfield February 5th, and it's your greatest opportunity to hear experts share the latest tips, tools, and technologies for boosting yields, maximizing profitability, and producing the preferred bean in the industry. Register for free today at illsoy.org slash summit. That's I-L-S-O-Y dot org slash summit. And we are back here on RFD today. As we mentioned, Sabrina Berkowitz is here. She's our social media director, and we talked about the cold weather. Was that the hot issue for the week? Yes, this is, uh, this is the big issue of the week. And I want to talk a little bit about, we, we've talked to you before about posting on social media when things are trending, and it's really important you recognize how great that works. So the world was obsessed with the cold weather happening in the United States this week, and we saw that reflected all over social media. And so, of course, being the social media person I am, we got out there and started putting out all kinds of content about how farmers have to keep going and take care of their animals and how to livestock animals stay warm in winter weather. And, boy, did we get all kinds of engagement. We had one video that's reached um, – about 45,000 people, which is what? great for us because on average our content reaches, you know, one to 2,000 people for each Facebook post. That's amazing. Yes, and it's been viewed something like more than 20,000 times. And that's so just one of our stories. A good platform for agriculture and for education and, and really using that Illinois Farm Bureau reach. Yes, but you yourself, we want you to share your stories of how you have to keep working despite the weather, right. how you keep your animals warm. I saw lots of farmers getting on this week. We were even sharing their posts onto our Facebook and Twitter pages about how difficult their jobs are and how it's they're standing between life and death with True. their animals and all the things they have to do. And so it really drew a lot of great attention to what they do. And we even saw uh, mainstream media jumping onto these stories about how farmers have to keep working despite the cold. And mm. that's fantastic when we can do that. Real quickly, you were just sharing with me that you were able to work with some young people down in southern Illinois through the Farm Bureau and FFA, sharing these types of messages this week. Yes. Well, we talked a lot about social media etiquette. We were in Wabash County talking to all their wonderful young entrepreneurs and their CEO club and then a lot of FFA kids for um, FFA Acquaintance Day at Wabash Community College. Hmm. So, yes, we learned a lot about manners on social media, but most importantly, what I wanted to convey to them is how not to sort of wreck your reputation before your career and your life even gets a chance to begin because it can happen, unfortunately. Yes. So hopefully they're a little wiser now this week. <laughs> Wonderful advice for sure. Now the last couple minutes here, Super Bowl Sunday coming up. Yes, Super Bowl Sunday is coming up. Why do so I do that? I don't know the <laughs> peace sign. <laughs> Rita's making funny hand just, signals yeah. for our, our LinkedIn video. Um, so Super Bowl is coming up. So – our connection to that is there's going to be a lot of food eaten, right? And we're the farmers that grow and raise the food. So if you're producing or growing or raising something that's being eaten, like chicken wings, I mean, there's probably millions of them that will be consumed this weekend. Um, this is a great time to get out there and share a post and make a connection with what you're doing as a farmer. If you're having your own Super Bowl party, that's even better. Show us pictures, but then talk about what you do as a farmer to raise chicken or whatever it is, or dairy, because I'm sure there's going to be lots of cheese eaten on pizzas and nachos and stuff this weekend. So that's our connection to it. Now, what will you decide to eat for Super Bowl Sunday? You know, I everyone's going to cringe when I say this. I'm not even watching because it's my birthday. And oh, it's your birthday. <laughs> I, well, my birthday's on Monday, but I'm celebrating on Sunday, and I've got all kinds of things I'm going to be doing other than watching the big game. Hmm. Yeah, I, know. I guess you'll make it. Everybody's cringing, but I will be eating some chicken wings Tuesday night because my parents always make my favorite birthday dinner. How nice is so. that? Yes, they're wonderful. Well, happy birthday early. Thank you. Now, the tradition here, which I don't really know how the tradition started in this division of if it's your birthday, you bring in the I snacks. Know. It yes. seems odd, doesn't it? You know, it does, but I kind of like it that way. Yeah. So I'm going to bring in something special on Monday. But I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag early. Okay. I'm not going to push on it. But we'll look forward to celebrating with you. <laughs> yes, that sounds good. And you have had about a minute and a half left here, but you have had such a busy January. We said goodbye to January yesterday, but you were all over the place. Yes, we've been all over the place uh, digitally and physically. Um, we've had a lot of things happening in the 
month of January concerning animal welfare on livestock farms here in Illinois. Mm. And that, that's another reason that this is a really great time to get out there and share those messages because it's going to warm up this weekend, but we know it's going to get cold again. And I'm mm-hmm. guessing it's probably going to get really cold again. So I want you to be thinking about when that happens, how you can share those messages because every time you do, that has the power to influence somebody's opinion positively for farmers and animal agriculture. Where can they interact or see the videos that you mentioned? Sure. Tell us a little bit about that. You can go to Facebook and look us up at facebook.com slash farmers. Or just type in Illinois Farm Bureau, and you can see all of those posts um, on our Facebook page. Anything we missed, Sabrina, you want to leave us with? No, I think that's it. Just give us a follow at IL Farm Bureau on Twitter and at Farm Week Now on Twitter for all the latest ag news and what's happening. And then, of course, on Facebook, where you're going to see all of our great videos. Sounds great. Again, Sabrina Berkowitz, Illinois Farm Bureau, Senior Social Media Specialist. That's going to be a wrap on today's RFD Today program. We'll be back with more. Hey, Illinois soybean farmers, if you want to be the best of the best, your journey to the top starts at the summit. The 2019 Soybean Summit is coming back to Springfield February 5th, and it's your greatest opportunity to hear experts share the latest tips, tools, and technologies for boosting yields, maximizing profitability, and producing the preferred bean in the industry. Register for free today at illsoy.org slash summit. That's I-L-S-O-Y dot org slash summit. More farm news and information ahead. Stay tuned for more RFD Today here on the Illinois Farm Bureau Radio Network. If you're in the mood for some sprucing up, you're in luck. From big to small or farm to front yard, your Illinois Farm Bureau member discount from John Deere is ready and waiting to help. It's easy to think green when it's the rewards loyalty program with savings on equipment, special parts, and home and workshop products. Whether your tasks involve mowing, planting, or cleaning, you'll be set for whatever your work requires. All you need to do is sign up.